Hi my friends, it's Peg here and I just thought I would hop on and tell you about what a normal play day looks like for me. Um, I've got a few things out on my desk and I will try to go back into the video and do a, a time stamp for you so that you know where I'm working on different projects in case you're interested in specific things. but. Um, this is a small journal that I had begun some time ago. Um, I'd taken a class from, I can't remember who, I'll have to remember to put a tag in there. Um, oh, vintage page design. And uh, it was a little pocket book. And so I'm wanting to add some things to the plain cover of this particular little fold-up journal. So I started out with some tissue paper and I'm using a glue stick um, for the bottom layer, trying it out. It's going over this watercolor paper and it's not adhering as well as I want it to. I was trying this um, Elmer's glue stick. It says it's extra strength and I used to use an extra strength Elmer's glue stick that worked really well and then they changed the formula and we haven't been able to find it since then so um, I just thought I'd give this one a try and see how it works. I can say that on watercolor paper not the best. I mean it'll stick something down but you're going to have to put some more sealant or something over it eventually. So then I'm going to add some collage papers, um, you know, moving it around to different areas of the journal. Sorry if I'm off camera a little bit. Didn't really have this centered on my desk real well. But, um, you know, I'm thinking about the layers I want to add to this and what I want to do. and you know, how long something's going to take to dry down and when I can put the next layer on. And, um, you know, as you work on projects throughout the day, there is drying time involved. And so what I typically do is work between several different projects. I don't just, you know, sit down and do one project and start to finish. Um, I'll pick up different things that I've got sitting around my studio and work on them until I say, well, okay, this is at a point where I need to stop and do something different. So um, this one, I'm doing the glue stage. Um, this is one stage in here. I will end up flipping this over eventually and finishing out some of the tags inside. And um, I want to do a video of just doing some simple tags and things. So. Hopefully I can get that done maybe this week and get that out for you guys. Um, Jamie, APG Jamie, did a wonderful presentation for Art Joy is Sharing this month, uh, showing about hidden journaling and that sort of thing. And so I'm going to try to do some tags for that type of thing where you can hide things in a pocket or behind something and... Um, yeah, do some things that are partially hidden. So I'm looking through my stash, trying to find some things. Um, I did find a chipboard piece that I decided to put on the front cover of my little fold-up journal. It says life, and I don't know, I was thinking about life and some life quotes and you know things that we do in life and I thought the tags could relate to that and you know the angels that we have in our lives and uh, that sort of thing so that's where I was headed with this I pulled out this piece uh, it's an angel that I cut out of something and I'm going to glue that down and because it's a heavier stock it looks like it might have even been on some packaging or something because it's got a shiny coat or it might have been a card who knows you know I I collage all kinds of different things but um, I'm using those 
sewing clips to hold that in place and these are real handy to have. Um, I think I've dropped them into my Amazon store before so if you're interested in finding things like that that I use in my art if you look in the description box below the video I have a link to my Amazon store and things are broken out by you know mixed media and watercolor and that sort of thing so if there's something specific you're looking for in the way of supplies you can go there and find it. Um, you don't necessarily have to shop with me. Uh, it just you know gives you a clue as to what it is I'm using. And if you do decide to shop with me, it does give the artist, you know, if you're looking at these things from an artist's YouTube channel, it does give them a few cents on the dollar for when you purchase that way. So um, just an opportunity to help those people that are providing content for you. And while you're at it, if you like this content, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe so that you get notification when I have new videos coming out. And, um, you know, leave a comment so that I know you've been here and that, you know, what, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to talk with you. So there's that chipboard piece, and I'm having I'm having some struggle with the glue bottle. I do end up having to take it to the sink and clean the cap out and add a little bit of water. I've had this glue for oh, probably a year, year and a half, and they do clog up. So sometimes you have to clean the nozzle, and sometimes you have to add a little water and shake it up, and so I decide I'm definitely going to have to do that with this bottle because it is not cooperating. And, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of water, just a little bit. And, you know, clean clean the nozzle out really well. I use some hot water and a needle and poke down through there and get it cleaned out well. So I'm struggling and struggling and struggling. And, yeah, you don't need to see me struggle but um, I'm going to put a little bit of ink around the edges of the chipboard and get that glued in place on the front cover and that will make a nice addition to this little accordion or concertina style, that's what they call it um, or at least what they used to call it was a concertina style pocket journal so there are lots of different styles of journal and I think if you, you know, search on concertina or pocket journal, you'll see other people that have done this type of thing. So I'm getting to the point where this is pretty wet and I'm going to have to switch out to doing something else. So uh, this is probably where a timestamp will come in and we'll move on to the next thing. So next up I have a piece of paper that I had some color on. You know, I don't know if I was just cleaning up a print or, you know, sometimes I just have leftover paint and things and um, I put it on some paper to be worked later, to be worked into a collage piece or i um, not sure exactly where I was going with this one, but I like the colors and I had some more of that uh, collage paper left and so I decided I was going to glue some of that down to this particular piece. I'm going to go back to that um, glue stick and this paper is a smoother paper. It might be a Bristol or something like that um, but it is not watercolor paper and it's accepting the glue much better than the previous paper that I had out here. So um, you can see that that glued down pretty well in place. Next up, I wanted to do some mark making. So I get out, um, I've got a graphite pencil, and I'm going to use that um, graphite pencil 
and make some marks on my page. I also have some very uh, fluid liquid ink and I'm going to just scribble some graffito or something on there um, which is going to make the page very wet and you know what happens when my pages get very wet I have to set them aside to dry I did try taking out a heat tool and then I thought no I'm just going to blow this stuff around way too much not going to like that. Yeah, here I am struggling with the glue again. So, uh, you can see I finally got it cleaned out. And uh, shaking it up, getting the water mixed in. And I think I might finally be happy with that glue bottle. Anyway, here we go got the ink bottle and I'm just gonna add some textural marks mark making on this background so while I set that aside to dry I have these uh, handmade papers that I had gotten at Dick Blick the other day and I decided to sort them out and see if there was anything in that grouping of papers that I wanted to add to this collage piece that I'm working it's got some blues and browns and you know some some of the colors that I really enjoy using and you know, I didn't know if I wanted a contrasting color of paper to add to that or something that was going to be in the same family. You know, these are really gorgeous papers with a lot of texture, and I thought it would be fun to incorporate some of these. But first I wanted to sort them out and see just what I had in the grouping. And you can see there are lots of fun papers here. Now you can make your own papers, you can gel print, you can do all of that, and yes I have a ton of that stuff, but I do buy some things like this. Now these are lightweight enough that you can glue them down easily and um, they're going to tear and become something interesting in your art. Aren't those gorgeous? So that piece was still very wet and I decided to move on and keep working on something else while that was drying. So I'm going to set these papers aside and I'm going to move on to a journal. As you can see this is a Dina Wakely um, craft colored journal. I like it because the cardstock in it is heavier weight and it can take quite a bit of medium. So I'm going to start with a stamp. Uh, I start with an archival ink and I stamp it down and it's just not coming out quite the way I had hoped. Now there's nothing wrong with this but I'm not because it's a, a foam stamp. It does Foam stamps are really made for acrylic paint or something more like that than they are for accepting ink. And, uh, you know, the rubber stamp that I have down there probably were to work just fine with an ink pad. But what I had in hand was this big foam stamp that I wanted to use. So I've got the general idea of the imagery that I want to portray there. So I'm going to get this uh, golden teal paint. I'm, I want to stick with that blue tone and a paintbrush and just a scrap of paper to put some paint on to paint with. Something I dug out of the trash. And I'm going to kind of paint that image onto my page with that golden acrylic paint. I love that teal color. And with that green you know, blue-green combo makes me happy. I don't know about you guys, but it just makes me happy. 
So, and especially on this craft, um, the background originally was probably some leftover stuff and some, I think there's some of that um, gloss spray from Dina on there and maybe sprayed through a stencil or something because I do see that there's some polka dot kind of imagery there. But yeah, once again, I've got a very wet page and what do I do with a wet page? I move on to something else. So I've got another journal. This one happens to be another Dina Wakely journal and I've got some leftover paint. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use it. I'm going to put it on this page and keep creating. Okay, so we've done several projects already. We've collaged a background, we've done some mark making, we've done some mixed media journaling. Um, I've still got some of that paint left. I've got another journal. As you can see, I work back and forth between journals. I don't just do one page in a journal until it's done. I continue to work in between things. So, you know, typically when I do a video, it's kind of a project start to finish, but this is what a play day looks like for me and how I like to work, how I like to go between projects and let things dry down in between times. So, you know, this might help you guys understand that you don't always have a start to finish project when you're working. Um, so here we go, we've got another project. So now I've got a stamped image that I have embossed with looks like some purple uh, embossing powder and I'm going to take out some colored pencils. These are uh, Prismacolor pencils and I want to just put some color down into the imagery and you know I'm just using stuff that I've got sitting around me. Um, this box has given me a little bit of difficulty so I'm rearranging it and I'm gonna start with just adding some color. Now this is a real small image so I'm trying to be a little bit careful so I don't break up the embossing on here but um, it's these little delicate flowers and I think they're so cute and I'm thinking well this would be fun to put on a tag or a note card or into a pocket or something so um, I just want to colorize these with these colored pencils and what I end up doing is um, I do have some uh, blending solution and all of that kind of stuff but um, didn't have that handy so I had some spray uh, hand sanitizer and a q-tip and I thought well okay I can uh, move that color around using that and that's all I really wanted to do was kind of blend that color pencil out and move it around on the page so that's what I end up using. You know, use what you have. You don't have to have real fancy specialized stuff. You can have a colored pencil and a Q-tip and some hand sanitizer and go to town. Um, so, want to get some color on the leaves and stems and uh, yeah, I kind of hard to see here because it's small and I apologize if you're having difficulty seeing what I'm doing here but um, just getting the colors blended together you know using a variety of greens a variety of pinks and purples uh, a little bit of darker blue in the shaded areas and then I'll come in with my wonderful tool here, this Q-tip, and I'm going to cut it down to make it a little bit smaller because the tips on, these are those dollar store ones, they're not even good Q-tips, they're just, you know, what I had. So, um, gonna, and I shouldn't call them Q-tips, I should call them swabs because Q-tips is a brand name. 
So you can see I've got my spray out there. I'm just picking it up and I'm starting to blend that color out a little bit. Now that uh, alcohol in the hand sanitizer will dry and once it dries on the paper you aren't going to see it. Uh, I'm just using it to kind of blend those colors together. So I'm just having a fun play. If um, you have suggestions about what you do on a play day or you know how you organize your play or what helps you work through projects leave me a comment I'd like to I'd like to know how you work and and what you're working on and you know if you have a video doing this sort of thing uh, send it to me so that I can see what you've done so trying to think if I did another project or not after this I'm just cutting this out a little bit. Um, I'm going to ink the edges with just a stamp pad and um, foam sponge tool to give it a little bit of dimension. And I think I did move on from this to do something else, but isn't that just a fun little piece? I mean, just that on a page with a little quote or something would be a fun thing. Um, Okay, so this is some of that um, distress oxide in a purple that kind of goes with the color scheme that I've chosen for this piece. And then I'll blend that out a little bit too on the edges just to, you know, make it look like the rest of it. So it looks like it belongs. You know, you want things that look like they were done in the same style, same fashion when you end up with your project. So I'm going to put my pencils back in the drawer and probably move on to something else. So in the spirit of sharing and that sort of thing, you may want to check out Art Joy Sharing, which is our Facebook group where we share a lot of our artwork and, um, you know, have kind of an ongoing art journaling challenge going this year and that sort of thing. So with the monthly challenge this year, I've been working in a calendar journal. And so this is my calendar journal. And since March has begun, I decided I would decorate my March page with just a few things here. Um, since we have St. Patty's Day this month, uh, I'm going to put a shamrock on that day because it's March and it's windy and rainy. I'm going to put a little uh, girl out here with a umbrella and her raincoat and boots and, you know, just sloshing through March with uh, some colorful uh, umbrella to cheer up the page. And I'm going to use, I got some uh, Neo Color 2 out because I had these markers and I didn't have anything that was flesh tone in it. And being mixed media, you can use just about anything on a page, right? So I grabbed those crayons to do the flesh tone. And um, there's another tin of those crayon type products. I have some gelatos and Neo Color 2 and things like that in this tin. And i uh, going to use these pens. Now these are, what are these? They're a, a pen I picked up at a discount store and I can't remember which one. I've had them for a little while and I haven't done much with them and I thought, well, I'm going to bust them out today and give them a try because it's just something that's going into my monthly challenge journal and it's going to be on a calendar page and you know if I'm coloring things like this on a lightweight page sometimes that stuff will go through to the back side but I'm okay with that because you know when it does that I just glue something else over the top because I got a lot of paper and I can glue a lot of things down so 
just going to do some uh, outlining and detail work uh, with a pen. This is a Stedler pen I picked up the other day at Dick Blick. It's uh, called Stedler Permanent Lumo Color, and this is a fine tip pen, fine tip marker, and it's it's kind of a nylon tip to it. It's not felt. It's I like the tip a lot better than a felt tip. So remember, if you're looking for supplies, um, check my list in the description box below the video. Uh, you'll just have to click on the more and you'll see the drop down information. And you will have to be on a computer or tablet or phone, something like that type of device to do that. You can't really do that on your television set. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to get out some stencils. I'm going to do a border on this page and finish it out. Um, these are some stencils, border stencils from Ranger uh, and Diane Reevely. And I thought, oh, I like the, the green leaf motif. I think that'll be kind of springy. In March, we start seeing some things peeking out, so maybe I'll be seeing some green starting here this month. I'm sure hoping for it. We've had plenty of snow and ice, and I'm ready for spring. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, not everybody lives in a cold climate like I do, but uh, we've been feeling the cold here plenty. And I am ready for some sunshine, no more rain, no more wind, no more snow. <laughs> All that stuff that bugs me and makes me want to bug out of here. So thanks for being with me. I appreciate each and every one of you, your kind comments, uh, the sharing that you do within our group, and uh, the caring that you do for one another Remember to be kind, love one another, and I will see you in another video again very soon. Uh, you know, now that I'm back home and not traveling around, I hope to have more time to do this sort of thing when I'm not, you know, tending to my husband or the household. So, thanks again, and have a great day.